Hello, welcome back to another video. This is gonna be an update video for Heartbreaker and I totally did not already record this entire video, but uh, plug my SD card in the computer to find out that the entire thing was out of focus. Are you really that surprised based on the quality of my last ones? But anyway, this is gonna be a really quick update video on Heartbreaker. We've been printing away at some minor setbacks and stuff like that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what we have so far. Okay, so this is the Iron Man suit so far. We've got the helmet, abs, chest, both arms and both shoulders, and then the cod piece. By the way, this is my printer room. Um, so far I've got six. If you guys wanna see more about the printers and my setup and stuff, let me know. I can do a video on that. Additionally, I just painted and made this Captain America shield over here. People on TikTok seem to like it. Uh, they wanted to know how I got the metallic finish on it, so if you'd also like to see a video about that, also let me know. But yeah, this entire suit has been printed out of Polymaker's Polymax PLA, which is basically Polymaker's version of PLA+. Plus. You can see how much of it I have used so far and how much I have left. The stuff is great. Obviously, the smaller spools are only 750 grams, which is why I've flown through it so quickly. Also, we had a couple of failed things here and there. Um, that forearm down there was under extruded just because of some poor printer settings. On that bicep, the elbow didn't really print all the way, and that shoulder is actually 100% perfect. Uh, it, 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 I didn't mirror it. And I'm super sad about it too. I mean, you can, you, hopefully that's in focus. You can see how nice that is. Finish on this stuff is great. If you're interested, I have a code to get 10% off of this stuff at Polymaker's website. Check the description below if you're interested. But yeah, this is it so far. We had a quick hiatus where all the printers were actually not running because, I'll show you in a minute, excuse the poor lighting, but if you come over here in our bathroom, right, that right there is a GFCI receptacle. And you know, it, it's normally not really rigged to many other circuits in your house. However, the dingo that wired up our house decided to wire it to not only just this bathroom, but to both of our guest bedrooms as well. Look at him in there. I left the ring light on. He looks kind of scary. So that receptacle kept tripping the past couple of days and I could not use my printers at all. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to go ahead and show you what I had so far. Thankfully it's been fixed. It's actually fixed earlier today, but you know, it also just kind of gave me an excuse to make an update video. Okay. Okay, so as far as those parts go, this is the helmet. The only problem I've had with the Do 3D files for Heartbreaker so far has been the fact that I am scaling the suit for myself to be 93.5% of the original 100% scale. But even if you scale the helmet up to 100%, you, you, you can't bit it on your head. <laughs> and the restricting factor is this like indention underneath this vent right here. And so either that needs to go away or the entire back needs to come off in order for me to be able to fit my head in there. Because if I just go ahead and scale everything up, then it's just gonna look unproportional. This is already almost 100% and the whole suit is like seven percentage points smaller than this. So if I go above that, it's just gonna look crazy. So I actually have a friend that's modeling a Heartbreaker helmet right now. He's even got some cool inner details and stuff. And I mentioned that to him, I was like, hey, I can't fit my head in this one. And no, I no, I don't have a big head, okay? I actually have a fairly small head, small brain. But I mentioned that to him, he's taking it into account and I think he's gonna design one that has the entire back come off instead of this tiny little strip. So hopefully we should be good. We're definitely gonna have to reprint the helmet though. We got the chest piece here. What printing this out told me was that I actually got the scale spot on. If I had scaled it any smaller than 93.5% uh, with me being a five foot 10, fairly skinny individual, I don't know if this would fit. But yeah, super hyped. The arc reactor is obviously huge. We're gonna be sticking a bunch of LEDs in there and possibly some LEDs around it as well and little gaps like there, there, maybe up here or something like that. Then we got the bicep and the forearms. Um, something that I did change was I did cut out the places on each that's closest to the crease of my elbow so I have more room to bend. This little cutout portion was not originally cut out. The file actually normally comes up to about here but there was a nice clean line for me to make a cut along right here so I did it. And what I'm gonna do is go back and print this piece right here that I cut out in TPU, which is a flexible filament. That way, if I bend my arm, it's less uncomfortable, if that makes sense. And hopefully I'll get a little bit more range out of it as well. Same thing kind of goes for the bicep. I took a whole chunk out of the bottom of the bicep. I took that chunk out and I'm going to go ahead and 3D print that in TPU and reattach it. Something else I did, the Do3D files came with the elbow not attached to the bicep. I went ahead and just permanently attached it to the bicep. I'm learning more and more to fix most of my problems in the modeling softwares rather than 
printing everything out and trying to attach it afterwards because sometimes that can be a pain sometimes it can leave a mess as well so I went ahead and put holes in the elbow joints just to be able to hinge the forearm to it later and I also combined the elbow and the bicep I've learned more and more that the simpler the hinge system the more you're gonna be able to move I really did want to split this up to have the elbow a separate moving piece but really if you start to try to play around with stuff like that and get too complicated you run out of room to work with and you actually are able to move less also when I tried to split it in half the, the elbow joint does look a little strange I have to admit on this side looks fine you know you've got one plate here and one plate here and what would normally be a joint holding them together this one they're, they're just they're just kind of one thing so even if I did want to split it it would probably look a little strange the arms legs shoulders all these pieces also have accompanying models that are meant to be printed out of a flexible filament that act as inserts so it'll actually kind of be like a sleeve for my elbow so that when I stick my arm in here even though there's a gap between my forearm and my bicep you're actually not going to be able to see my arm finally one last thing I did this for the mark 7 suit and I decided to do it for this one too because it just works so well I took the ad piece file from do 3d and I actually split all the ad pieces into their individual plates. There's four of them. I showed you that earlier, um, but I also went ahead and modeled some small little hooks and stuck them to the back of the model before I printed them. So if it'll focus, the top plate actually has two hooks and every plate after that has four. What that allows me to do is it allows me to attach a spring between all four of those ad plates and it lets me bend over a lot easier. I did the same thing with the Mark 7. This is actually the ad piece from the Mark 7. And you can see on the back that I have two springs that go along and connect with each of the ad plates and I'm able to bend it over like like that. And like I said earlier, I'm definitely learning. It's a lot easier to just go ahead and add these hooks in the model on the computer before I print it. But you know, I didn't do that with the last one. I just printed the entire thing out, chopped it up, and then added the hooks on after because, you know, I'm still learning. But I'm excited to see how these work now that it's kind of incorporated into the model. So yeah, that's about everything so far. Again, we kind of had that little hiccup with our electricity in both of these bedrooms. This one is the room with my PC and stuff like that. And the next one over is the one with all my printers. So when there's no electricity, in either of them I'm getting nowhere but now we're back on track excited to go ahead and start cranking out things like the back and the legs my next step is going to be hollowing out parts of the model of the back it kind of has those vents on the back and I really want to hollow those out to be able to put co2 canisters back there or compressed air or something we may also stick some orange LEDs back there to have it kind of simulate some rockets or something like that next step after that is gonna be looking at the hinge on the knee and I'll show you right here this is kind of what the model looks like right now they make it look like it's a functional hinge but when you start to really look at it you realize if you were to hinge it at the indicated place the top of that hinge would actually just run into the thigh so I don't know if I'm gonna modify that I don't know if I'm gonna make something completely different I have no idea but those are the next steps uh things that I have to figure out but yeah that's about it thank you guys so much for just kind of catching up on this project I'm super excited obviously we only have a limited amount of time to finish it so it will get done again if you guys want to see some videos on things like my 3d printer setup or how to paint the Captain America shield or get that metallic finish let me know um also I I do have to just kind of put out there. Holy cow! I know this is like at the end of the video, but like, bear with me. I posted a short that I had posted on TikTok actually a really long time ago, and that short did scary well. As of now, when I'm filming this, it's at 930,000 views, which for me on YouTube is like, Daggum. You know, I hadn't really posted a short before that, but it, it it went pretty well. So thank you for your support on that. If you subscribed after seeing that video, welcome. I appreciate the support. So yeah, just want to make that clear. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.